So, in last class we have demonstrated the how to measure the spring constant of a helical spring. Okay. So, uh, basically determination determination of spring constant of a helical spring right so uh, you have seen that uh, spring and that that was hang from a support and then uh, i told in the lab that uh, there are two method to measure the spring constant one is static method and another is dynamic method so basically mainly we have used the dynamic method to uh, find out the spring constant. So, what is spring constant that uh, uh, that is basically spring constant spring constant equal to say is a k is equal to restoring force per unit elongation. Okay. So, if you have a spring, if you have a spring and uh, this is the position of the spring when uh, this force applied on the spring to uh, to elongate it. So, if it is 0, so this is the position. Okay. Uh, you can you can uh, attach a mass on it. So, this basically spring mass system uh, if just elongate it by applying force f then its position force applied f. So, initial position there was no uh, there was no force and then after applying force this is the position. Okay. So, then this we are telling this elongation of this uh, elongation of this uh, spring by say delta L because of applying force f. Now, since it is elastic, the spring is elastic, it has elastic property. So, that there will be opposite force that we tell restoring force to restore the this deformation. So, this same amount of force is applied in opposite direction. Okay. So, this is the internal force basically, internal this force that is uh, called restoring force. So, because of this force of, of F elongation is delta L. So, this force and this elongation, so is the proportional relation is a proportional. So, that proportional pro proportionality constant is uh, say k delta L. Okay. So, uh, this k then you can define that f by del L means the so, f is basically this applied force and this restoring force is equal, but in opposite direction. So, restoring force per unit per unit elongation. So, that is the definition of spring constant that uh, in laboratory we have seen how to how to find out. So, uh, this uh, uh, two method one is static, static method. So, in this method basically directly 
we apply force in terms of load in terms of load. So, if you apply m means then you have to take the spring in vertical vertically. Okay. Then uh, you attach a scale on it, you attach a scale on it, scale on it. Okay. scale on it yes. So, this basically centimeter scale, millimeter scale if you okay. and then you just uh, here some indicator we used here some indicator we use. Okay. So, you can see this uh, uh, if it is uh, initial position before applying uh, any load or just some initial load is there. So, because of that this what is the initial position. So, if you adjust this uh, this uh, this scale it is at 0 or it can have some value also it can have some reading also. Uh, so, this uh, so then we tell this for for some mass m 0 initial mass m 0. So, there is a reading some reading initial reading. So, that is the L 0 say. Okay. So, then you are increasing mass and then uh, the, there will be uh, extension elongation of this uh, of this uh, spring and this then the indicator will come down and you can take uh, reading uh, corresponding to those mass. So, here basically we will 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 apply uh, mass okay. and due to this mass this load this uh, force is basically will be m g downwards force will be m g that is basically force downward force m g and uh, yes it is the m g and because of that there will be uh, there will be uh, reading uh, this indicator will come down there will be reading l. So, l Basically, if it is 0, so this, this will be elongation for this mass of m for this mass m. Okay. So, now you are varying m and taking different l, different l. If it is 0, so that is the from 0, if it is not 0, some l 0. So, that you have to take care. Okay. So, so, then basically you are getting you are getting uh, you are getting basically mass versus this depression l so uh, you take different mass you take different mass and then uh, take the reading l from the scale okay so now in laboratory we have seen we have seen this so, uh, what are the range of masses we are using and what are the ranges of this uh, uh, of this reading L. Okay. So, this change is in few centimeter or few millimeter corresponding to that mass that depends on the spring constant k basically. Okay. So, that was the static method that just I have uh, I have shown in lab. So, in static method, but I did not uh, uh, complete the experiment, uh, but I have complete the experiment that dynamic method. Okay. So, in dynamic method uh, what was the working formula uh, that is what uh, uh, I just uh, told that working formula uh, was uh, uh, basically uh, I think it was uh, k equal to for dynamic method dynamic method that k equal to uh, 4 pi square by t square and then um, some this mass was uh, whatever we are varying and then initial if any initial mass if we consider then you have to write m 0. Okay. So, how this relation came uh, that one should uh, understand. So, you know this f equal to actually 
uh, if I write this uh, spin constant k and then uh, displacement, displacement instead of delta l I will write x in terms of x okay. uh, and then I will put negative sign. Now, f equal to basically in differential form d 2 x by d t square okay. then equal to minus k x. So, you are getting differential form of this spring mass system standard differential form second order uh, differential equation, it is a we tell is a homogeneous equation plus omega square x equal to 0, where, where omega 0 basically omega not 0 omega square equal to from here you can see this k by m uh, k by m okay. and omega is angular frequency and omega is 2 pi by t, t is time period, time period of this uh, spring mass oscillation. So, if it is vertical also this spring mass oscillation, okay. uh, so this time period of that oscillation that is t. Now, uh, so from here, from here basically you are getting k equal to 4 pi square t square m here m. So, this m uh, if initial mass if we neglect it it is a uh, m 0 if it is neglect is fine if you do not neglect then you should put this m 0. Okay. So, then you will get this k in this form. Now, so here basically if it is the working formula so, uh, we have to measure only time period t. Okay. So, this same spring mass system that same spring uh, is, uh, is this uh, here is a mass. Okay. So, now this is the original position and now if you put change put this mass and then if you just disturb it, if you just disturb it, so this then this spring will this spring mass will this basically this mass will oscillate, this mass is will oscillate, okay, mass will oscillate. So, with respect to this position, whatever the for a particular mass, whatever the position that will take 0 position, okay, and then the displacement. Uh, from the 0 position this displacement we are considering this x. Okay. So, so now uh, that is why this uh, this x whatever we have considered this x is this one and, uh, uh, and uh, now my task is just to measure time period t. So, how to measure that we have seen basically uh, we we count the number of oscillation just we displace this and just leave it and then we count the displace uh, count the total number of oscillation if I start at the beginning uh, not beginning not uh, just just at the here when the position is here if I start then basically between these two position it will oscillate. So, if I start from here then I have to take one watch, I have to take one watch right, I have to take one watch. So, basically we stop watch stop clock we use and that you have seen. So, here efficiently you have to control that in one hand you have to you have to uh, take your stop watch and make it ready and just after uh, here you see this when just you will displace and leave it. So, you do not need to just start your, uh, your stopwatch immediately. So, just you can wait, let it start this uh, uh, start to oscillate and then you basically you start your uh, stopwatch when this position is say here. Now, you start you, this is your starting point, then now you are counting this number of oscillation 1. 2, 3, 4, 
So, how many times how many number of oscillation you will take? So, that we have to decide and practically that we have seen. So, this for lower mass for lower mass this was this time to for lower mass from here you can see mass is low then k is constant. So, naturally t will be also low okay. means time period will be small time period. So, this frequency will be higher. So, it will oscillate very fast and you will feel difficulties to count it. Okay. So, practically uh, in during demonstration I have shown you uh, when I was using this uh, lower mass probably 100 uh, gram or 200 gram. So, it was difficult to count it. So, uh, higher the mass time period will be higher and it is convenient to count uh, them. So, uh, so uh, that way uh, you have to you have to uh, depending on the mass you have to choose uh, this how many how many oscillation you will take uh, in counting. So, uh, generally I I suggest that you fix time that okay. I will say I will take for 2 minutes or 1 minutes okay, or 3 minutes. Okay. So, during that uh, time uh, how many numbers of oscillations will be there. So, this time as I told 2 minute, 1 minute, 3 minutes is approximately. So, then uh, basically time period will be t divided by n. So, number of oscillation you see uh, you should not fix this number of oscillation as it is 50 or 30 or 10 or 20, because this time will basically um, will be very less when mass is very small. Okay. So, you should take reasonable time 1 minute or 2 minute or 3 minutes and then let it be there uh, number of oscillation, but you take this uh, integer number of number of oscillations. Okay. So, this way you for each mass at least you repeat this uh, the, this measurement 2 or 3 times 2 or 3 times okay, and then take average of t. So, for mass m 1 find out the time period t 1 average time period t 1. So, then you for mass m 2 you find out the time average t 2 etcetera. So, uh, practical during practical I have basically discussed all of these things. Okay. And, uh, and we have seen, so there we, we have seen basically uh, what is the realistic mass whether we use in kg or, or on uh, kilogram or, or, or in gram or microgram whatever. Okay. And how looks this uh, spring okay. and how it is uh, hanged from the support etcetera. So, here theoretically uh, when I am speaking, okay. so there uh, here m can be any value, it can be in microgram, it can be in milligram, okay. it can be gram or kilogram, okay. but in practically what is the range of mass. So, we have seen the range of mass it is uh, in kilo, it is in I think we are using in gram uh, and then we have uh, uh, we have taken this time uh, actually few uh, I think uh, it is the around uh, around uh, uh, 1 minutes uh, 60 second or more slightly more than 60 seconds and number of oscillation I we are taking around uh, basically uh, 50 60 uh, oscillation. So, uh, so, that was the practical. So, that I you cannot guess from this theory class when you are in lab. So, in lab additionally what you are learning what is the realistic uh, uh, realistic parameters we are using there. Okay. So, basically we are using uh, this mass in gram and uh, yes and this uh, we are noting down uh, one has to note down this uh, readings uh, when you are doing the experiment. So, the as I told I will I will discuss later on uh, when I was doing experiment uh, about the taking the how to how to note down the 
uh, uh, note down the data when you are uh, doing experiment. So, I think this is a very simplest experiment and table also I think one table is, uh, is enough to express this to note down this all data. So, uh, table 1 is so only one. So, I will write table 1. So, in table 1 you should give heading, you should give heading. So, basically mass I can give mass versus uh, mass versus uh, versus time period no time period mass versus time period okay, of the spring mass system of the spring mass system spring mass system this can be the uh, so immediately here you are using clock okay, stop watch so least count of the stop watch least count of stop watch stop watch or clock so, you have to note down. So, in our case in laboratory you have seen this that is uh, that is basically in uh, in uh, in second uh, hundredth of a second. So, it is uh, 0 0.01 second. So, that you have to note down okay. and then you uh, you have to make table you have to make table. So, first generally all the time we write serial number serial number. Okay means how many sets of data you are taking. So, this can be one column and then next column will be a mass different mass will apply and we will take reading. Okay. So, this mass and then you should write this uh, you should write the uh, I think G or G M generally we should write G. So, for gram mass in gram and then uh, for each mass you are counting you are taking the number of oscillation. So, number of oscillation oscillation okay, number of oscillation and then uh, for this number of oscillation what is the time uh, time time for number of oscillation it can be so say n. Okay in number of oscillation n okay. and time uh, for n oscillation time for n oscillation n oscillation okay. and then you uh, uh, find out for each mass. So, here basically uh, uh, for each mass you should take as I told 2 3 readings 2 3 readings and uh, so time for in oscillation in which which uh, in which unit. So, this is second. So, uh, then you should find out mean uh, time t mean time t okay, mean time t. So, in second in second. So, then you find out time period time period time period t equal to t by n say it again it is in second. Okay. Then I will find out basically um, I will find out t squares why that uh, already probably I told during demonstration. So, this will be the table. Okay. So, just you can uh, here mass for each mass I will take number of oscillation uh, uh, say if I fix this one then time uh, I have to. Uh, so, for different mass I think uh, for a particular say let us say say this the serial number say 1 means first for mass I will choose say 50 gram. Okay sorry this gram you do not need to write because already I have mentioned here. So, number of oscillation uh, so mass 50 gram number of oscillation say yeah if you take in our system if you take 50. So, this uh, for 50 number of oscillation this time time for this 50 oscillation it was taking 
this is 27.25 uh, second okay. and, and uh, uh, so mean time. So, basically this experiment uh, for this 5 uh, 50 gram mass if I take uh, uh, 50 number of oscillation what the time is taken. So, if I take this uh, this is one reading I should take another reading I should take another reading. Okay. So, then uh, so I am not writing or reading. So, this is from our lab this reading. So, it we you will get it is a uh, average you will get uh, uh, mean time for uh, uh, is the uh, mean time t will be I think it is the second. So, there will be some mean time there will be some mean time and uh, yes one should calculate some mean time and then from there you, you have now n you have now mean time t and uh, from there you should find out this t by n and if you calculate. So, uh, it will come say 0 0.30 or uh, the second okay. say suppose this because this is the realistic reading from our lab, but one has to write all I am just avoiding this one just I am telling this uh, just uh, so the serial number 2. So, say 100 gram serial number 3 say for 150 gram 4 5. So, for this at least 5 point you need and then you either you can yeah. So, mass is increased. So, I think you can keep this 50 number of oscillation 50 number of oscillation and then for this 50 uh, this is 3 I think this is the one mean I think here I will draw the like this. So, this for uh, one set another set again you take uh, 3 reading. So, here one reading is we have noted down this uh, 31.20 and then other two also you should take then find out the mean of it okay. and then find out the uh, it is a around this one uh, 0 point basically 39 uh, 5 this type of uh, in calculation comes. So, we have written 0 0.40. So, similarly for other one 0 0.50 this kind of uh, uh, data uh, we got from our lab. So, if you take square of it just make it square of it square of it. Okay. Now, uh, just uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier. So, you should plot the graph you should plot the graph this uh, uh, you are changing mass and basically calculating the uh, uh, finding out the time period for different mass. So, this if I plot this t square versus m. So, if m 0 I neglect if m 0 I neglect okay, then uh, if you do not consider if you make m 0 is uh, 0. So, then you will get a straight line passing through the this center. Okay. If you so this your 5 points uh, distributed like this. So, if you if you uh, if you consider this m 0. So, there will be uh, there will be I think earlier here uh, I I will show you uh, where I have calculated m 0 yes here. So, here k you are plotting this m versus t square m versus t square. Okay. So, this part okay, and other part this 4 pi square by 4 pi square m 0. So, that will be constant. Okay. So, it will intersect the y axis it will intersect the y axis when t square. So, so either uh, this curve you will get or this curve, but slope slope of this both curve slope of this both curve is same. So, that is basically um, that is basically t square by t square by m. Okay. So, that will be slope of this curve slope of this curve. Now, uh, so you have to find out the slope of this curve and that slope of the curve we will put uh, 
in your uh, uh, yes uh, in your equation here it is m by t square. So, but slope you are getting t square by m. So, you have to take uh, just inverse of it. So, you have to take inverse of it 1 by slope 1 by slope and put in this formula okay. and uh, you know pi square value. So, you will get the k value. So, whatever the data we have. So, we have calculated this k you generally uh, uh, yes we, we got it it is k equal to 19.60. Okay. Now, uh, you have to find out the error. Okay. So, that is plus minus some error delta k. So, generally I write this way delta k you have to find out. So, delta k uh, to find out delta k. So, uh, you know this uh, you have to use formula k equal to 4 pi square 4 pi square m plus m 0 divided by t square. Okay. So, that is the formula. So, now uh, how to find out this error delta k. So, this the we can take this the multiplication and division. Okay. So, relative error will be added for each one. So, relative error what is delta 4 pi square this is the 4 pi square by 4 pi square plus delta these three terms. Okay multiplication and division in that format it is there plus uh, delta t square by t square right. So, naturally this is a constant okay. so it will be 0 now plus here now here you can add this uh, delta m plus m 0 summation and subtraction rule. So, that is just absolute one is added. So, it, this will be basically 2 delta m this will be basically 2 delta m divided by m by m 0. So, now delta m we are not basically measuring. So, this uh, so delta m is 0 delta m is 0 delta m is 0. So, this part also will be uh, 0. So, only this part will contribute delta uh, t square. Okay. Now, delta t square by t square is there delta t square. So, uh, you know this uh, for any uh, if this is a function of t if we consider. Okay. So, I think uh, delta t square I can write delta t square will be uh, uh, so like this y q equal to t square. Okay. So, delta q equal to uh, del q by del t delta t right. So, q is t square. So, it will be delta t square delta q will be 2 t delta t 2 t delta t and the here this t square is there. So, basically here so this term is this term is basically this term. Okay. So, basically you are getting delta k by delta k by k equal to 2 delta t by t square. Right. Now, t square we are not measuring directly t again t equal to uh, t by n right t equal to t by n. Now, again it is in difference in, in, in multi, uh, division form. So, uh, relative uh, error will be added for this. So, delta t by t plus delta n by n. Okay. So, delta n we are we are counting. So, there is a delta n we will consider that is 0, but delta t we will consider there is a value 0 0.01. Okay. So, here basically you are getting delta t by t equal to delta t by it is uh, not this t it will be this t small t okay. delta t by t. So, simply delta k by k is 2 uh, delta t by here uh, no 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 not t square here this t and this will go. So, it is a t. So, here delta t by t equal to delta t by t. So, this is the uh, form of this is the uh, form of uh, 
error expression. So, now easily you can find out what is this 2 into 0 0.01 divided by T, T C now for different mass you have calculated. So, um, so you have to calculate error for each mass. Okay. So, then their time period are different T 1, T 2, T 3 etcetera. So, okay. so, you have to put this time for different. Uh, so, you will get uh, for each mass there is error. Now, you should take average of this error uh, that will be delta k by k. Okay. Uh, I think yes, no, what I should do we should do. So, this delta k by k uh, equal to this. So, this I will write delta k equal to this into k because k value you know already we, we found this k value. 19.60. So, I will multiply with 19.60. So, I will get delta k. So, I will get basically for different t, t 1, t 2, t 3, delta k 1, k 2, k 3. So, from there I will take average delta k equal to delta k 1 plus k 2 plus k 3 etcetera divided by this uh, here if I take 3 this 3. Okay. So, I will get delta k. So, this delta k uh, you know with our data I have calculated it is uh, it is around uh, it is coming 0 0.0 I think I have calculated uh, it is coming 0 0.08. Okay. So, this approximately you can write 0 0.01 okay. you can write 0 0.01. So, your result is basically you have to write k spring constant whatever find out. 19.60 plus minus 0 0.01. So, this is the result you have to report. Okay. So, this is the way after doing experiment basically uh, you have to understand the working formula before starting experiment and uh, then depending on the uh, formula you have to uh, you have to uh, take data and then you have to analyze the data plotting graph calculation and then uh, error uh, calculation and then final result you have to write this way. And of course, you have to uh, put your unit this unit whatever here. So, here basically it is Newton per meter okay. because Newton per meter because per force per unit elongation. Okay. So, that the spring constant. So, this is in Newton per meter. Okay. So, do not forget to write uh, unit all the time you have to write unit okay. otherwise this is the meaning. So, uh, so, I think uh, I have completed the experiment and the analysis uh, on, on the determination of spring constant. Okay. So, thank you for your attention.